Hello everyone. Well, it's a bit of a case of deja vu for me because I've seen this vacuum before. In fact, I've unboxed this vacuum before. You won't have seen this vacuum before. This will be the first time you're seeing this on my channel anyway. But yes, I unboxed this and recorded the unboxing. But with one thing and another and using a new camera, the footage got lost. I don't know what happened. I tried to retrieve it, but I couldn't. So I'm having to do it again, but it was quite a while ago that I unboxed this. So perhaps it's going to be all new to me again this time round. So this is an AEG, so it's a German made AEG, vintage-ish, possibly from the 90s. And uh, it's in quite good condition, the box. So uh, what model is it? Trying to have a look. Can't really see. Oh, it's a Chroma 5 electronic. Can't see the model number. So, let's have a look. I think I packed it up more or less how it was anyway, so. It's not going to uh, be much different to how it would have been in the first video. Right, let's start with the toolkit. Okay then, let's have a look at the cleaning tools. So, first out, we've got the AEG Vario 4100 or 4100 or however you want to pronounce that so it's quite a nice looking carpet and floor nozzle pretty standard you've got your parking slot or parking bracket for the parking slot on the machine i'm not sure if there's two or just one we'll soon find out two nice big wheels for easy maneuverability and it's a plastic base plate but with a further four wheels with little rubber tires on them so that this is supposed to be for carpets and hard floors so the little rubber tires give grip on a hard floor it's also got some very quality feeling rubber squeegees at the back there nothing at the front and of course you've got your red litter pickers but there's no brush on this so it is designed as i said for carpets and hard floors but there is no brush Looks like it'd be okay. I'm not sure how it would snow plow. But there we go. That's the main floor head you get with this model. Then you get a hose, pretty standard swivel top hose. In fact, I think the hose swivels in the machine. I'm not sure, I'll check. But anyway, the hose does swivel either end, as you can see. No suction control on the handle of this, but there is a electronic control on the machine itself. Then we've got a chrome telescopic tube. And again, it feels like a, a good quality solid item. There we are. And finally, we have a spare bag. Doesn't say what type. I need to get some more bags for this. If I was to demo it, I don't want to demo it with the original bags. I think the bags you can get now for these will probably be the sort of micro fleece material, which is better than these paper bags. I'm not sure if this is just a single layered bag or a twin layered. It's hard to tell. I think it's only a single layered bag there. And then we've got the instructions, of course, in lots of different languages and probably covering other models. Well, it's covering a model that has a remote a remote handle there. This is of course just the bog standard machine. Right, there we go. That's all the tools. Let's have a look at the cleaner. Well, I said it was all the tools, but I forgot this actually comes with a full size turbo head, which is a nice addition to any cylinder vacuum. It's also got its own instruction book. So this design I've I'm very familiar with this design head. I've seen this on other vacuum cleaners. I've seen it even branded Hoover. And I think it was uh, branded Vax as well on some Vax cleaners. I think it was. It's quite an old design. You've got, of course, your brushes. As you can see, it's all new and unused. There is a little squeegee at the back. A bit more of a rigid plastic than the, the squeegee on the carpet and floor nozzle. And the same squeegee at the front so that will snow plow 
but again I think this is designed mainly for carpets obviously being the turbo brush you've got easy access to the turbine here in case you get a blockage you have to be careful what you vacuum up with a turbo brush like this just like with a dirty fan upright vacuum cleaner when all the dirt passes through the fan whether it be plastic or metal you have to be a bit careful what you pick up so you don't damage the blades especially on this sort of machine with a plastic uh, turbine so no hard or sharp objects but this is uh, of course ideal for pet hair two wheels at the back two little wheels at the front it's got uh, a parking bracket as well so there it is, the AG Rotosoft 1100. Okay, let's have a look at the cleaner. It's all nicely wrapped up. This is, this is the packaging that it had. I haven't put any extra packaging on this. Now this is a very smart looking vacuum, if I remember correctly. Hang on. I don't want that noise. There we are. Come on. There we are. Oh, you can see everything. You can see it's very reflective. As you can see, you can see sneak peek behind the scenes there. Well, it is a smart vacuum and it's called the Chroma Electronic Chroma because it is this lovely black and chrome. It looks you know, sort of like a motorbike, you know, it's a, a very masculine looking vacuum if there is such a thing. Well, there certainly are, I think, masculine and feminine looking vacuums and it, it mainly goes by the colour a lot of the time. If this was in pastel colours, it would look like a feminine vacuum, but it's black and chrome. So, but it's not. I didn't know when I bought this, it feels quite cold, the chrome surface as opposed to the plastic feels colder but it isn't metal it's not chrome it is plastic which is why I'm handling it with kid gloves because I assume and I can't remember if this is okay how did they open this oh there we are ah well it is it is not the same shiny finish but I thought like on some vacuums that have a metallic finish they a black on the inside but this at least is as you can see it has got the chrome running all the way through it's definitely plastic though but it's more highly polished I'm not sure whether this matte chrome would polish up to the same standard as the the surface but anyway while I've got it open let's show you the silly place that they've got some of the small cleaning tools so with this machine to access the tools you have to turn it off and that's like the um, Hoover Compact, the sort of second generation Hoover Compacts that were released in the 80s, the boxier compacts. They had internal tool storage but you couldn't access them without switching the machine off. The same goes with this because obviously it's in the back compartment so if you try and access them with the machine running you won't be able to open the back compartment or be quite difficult to. So there we go inside we've got two tools quite a nice but small upholstery nozzle with your litter pickers it's got a couple of bleed holes as well at the back to make it easier to move on uh, your curtains and things of course you can reduce the suction and you've got a very short I've seen that design many times quite a short stubbly crevice tool but no dusting brush on this machine there's only space for those two nozzles there so while we've got the uh, bag door open, let's uh, have a look inside. So we've got the same paper bag I showed you, self-sealing. I don't want to pull, oh well, I'll, I'll do it. I should be able to get it back. And then that should, I don't know if that comes out. No, it doesn't. So you do have to yank it a bit. I don't really want to, I'm trying to take it out without damaging the bag. You've got, I don't think the filtration on this is terrific, is it? You've just got a sponge, quite coarse pre-motor filter there. The motor is just situated just behind the grill. You might just be able to get a glimpse of that. 
at the slots in there and then the exhaust filter is here so how do we get this off I'm sure I did this in the unboxing but I can't remember how I did it I might not have done actually I can't remember opening this does it come out from the other side no this must come out from this side You see, I thought, oh, Blase, I've done this once before. I don't need to check. I'm going to have to check the instructions to see how to take that filter out. I've just read in the instructions that uh, AEG recommend you replace this micro filter after every five full dust bags. So it's not washable. And they're saying that the pre-motor filter shouldn't require any maintenance unless the bag bursts. And then they're just saying, tap it clean. They're saying it basically doesn't need any maintenance that. But this one, they are saying every five full bags. Not sure if they would have come with, um, what am I doing? The bags, uh, the filter, sorry. Sometimes obviously with Miele cleaners, you normally get a couple of filters with the bags. So there it is. That's the only level of protection, protecting our poor lungs from the dust it's sucking up well. There are three levels of protection, I suppose. The bag, the pre-motor filter, but this is the final filter. The exhaust filter for post-motor filter. So that just doesn't open up fully, just opens like that and you just, that'll become black mainly with the carbon dust from the motor, of course. So basically that's all I can show you inside the cleaner. So just close the chrome lid. Ah, I thought it would click, but it doesn't. Oh, there we go. You've got a bag check indicator. It's hard to show you everything on this very shiny surface. But here, this is the regular piston type bag check indicator. And the cleaner exhausts from these two vents either side. There's no exhaust vent on the bottom, which I do prefer having a top mounted exhaust because if you were to use the machine in this position, for example, when you're cleaning the stairs, it's not blocking off the exhaust vent. A lot of cleaners have the exhaust vent here. So I do prefer it on the top, as long as it's not gonna blow in your face. The best exhaust vent that I've used and I've experienced is the ones that SIBO employ in their cylinder cleaners, having the air belt that diffuses the exhaust air around the body of the machine. So there's no hot air blast that I suspect you might get from this so as i said yes it's made in germany unlike uh, current aeg models which are made somewhere in the eu i believe most of them you've got two pedals on the back obviously on off and cord rewind that's quite a nice quality cord it's an unusual plug this would have been fitted this is a factory fitted plug but it's not molded on it's oh it's a legrand brand plug made in england so german made vacuum with an english made plug so whether this was actually fitted in the german factory or these were imported into the uk and then taken somewhere and a uk plug fitted i expect not they probably shipped in the plugs to actually fit in the factory that would make more sense so yeah it's a nice it does feel like it's a quality cord in you go and it does fit quite neatly actually in the the back of the machine because this is a german cleaner and it would in germany it's native germany it would have had a probably a two pin plug and they tend to be smaller than the uk ones i have had some german made vacuums and the plugs stick out of them because they were designed to be fitted you know with a german plug and i think there was an aeg one and it, the it uh, the plug came out of the top and um, yeah it looked a bit unsightly because obviously the uk plug is a bit bigger than the european type okay so we have very nice fairly smooth yes dial to control the suction let's try and angle it so you can see it without all the light reflecting I've just noticed it says here four filter system which possibly means that the bag has got two layers that's the only other layer I can think two layered bag a pre-motor and a post-motor filter 
So we've got here suggested settings for various fabrics and upholstery and carpets and things. So the lowest setting, and it says 250, so I'm assuming 250 watts for your delicate items, curtains and lightweight dusting. And then 500 watts for your upholstery, 650 watts, quite a common sight on vacuums of this era, an economy setting. So that gives you sort of general cleaning all around the home at obviously lower wattage and a lower noise level. And then for your rugs, you've got 750 watts. That could incorporate carpets as well, I suppose. And then the maximum 1400, that's quite a jump, isn't it? Almost double from 750 to 1400 for your hard floors, but also for intensive cleaning on, on carpets and when you're using the Roto Soft nozzle. Well, let's see uh, how this cleaner, oh, it's a bit, a bit uh, squeaky. Could do with a little bit of uh, WD-40 perhaps spraying inside that. There we are. There is a parking bracket. I haven't shown you underneath yet, have I? We'll have a look underneath. So the parking bracket is actually suitable for both the nozzles, the turbo and the Vario nozzle. That seems to fit a bit better than the turbo one. Let's see if there's a storage bracket on the back. Oh yes there is, you have the storage bracket as well. That slots in nicely there. And of course you've got your two wheels and a single swivel caster. Not up to Miele quality, but not bad. A bit noisy, isn't it? A bit scrapey. And uh, here's the old uh, rating sticker. So it's a Vampire, I think that's how you pronounce it. Chroma 5AG Type 61 DBE01 230 volt, 50 hertz, NOM 1100 watts, made in Germany. There we go, oh yes, that swivels. Nice 360 degree swivel hose. Okay, I can't remember what this sounds like. We'll soon find out. I'll start it off on uh, the lowest power setting, 250. That's not not bad at all, is it, for noise level, even on full power. I thought it might be a bit noisier than that. Doesn't seem to have a load of sound insulation, not like uh, well, the latest AG that I uh, showed you, depending on when you see this, was the, uh, the silence, wasn't it? That's a very, very quiet cleaner, so it's nowhere near that uh, quietness. But for the time, it's, you know, it's a pleasant sounding vacuum. And there doesn't seem to be any air hissing either. There doesn't seem to be any air escaping, so it seems to have quite good suction seals. I'm just going to quickly turn it on again, but on its full setting on 1400, just to see if this model has a soft start motor. I suspect not, but you never know. No, it doesn't. Right, let's uh, put the old Roto Soft on, see how noisy that is. I'll start it off on uh, high power. Relatively noisy, isn't it? Won't be so noisy when it's actually on a carpet. And uh, got the old tube, which way? So it's just a friction fit. There's no uh, click fitting, no buttons to release. You tended to get that sort of fitting on um, higher end vacuums. It's something I prefer as well on cleaners you can buy today. I do like to have a nice button to press so you, you know, because often when the friction fit, 
the tubes can fuse themselves together and when you want to sort of take them apart they can be quite difficult I think this is a lovely looking vacuum it looks very nice on the viewfinder very nice in real life as well it's very very smart it's the chrome they should they should use chrome more in vacuum cleaners shouldn't they everything's I don't know everything's so it's either you either get pastels or you get bold primary colors don't you or Dyson's I suppose mm, they're more of the gray aren't they with a with a touch of color I can just see how chrome would improve a lot of vacuum designs ah oh, yes I do like that you know I know it's a vacuum and people might be saying well if you're watching this you probably do understand where I'm coming from with this I appreciate design not just in vacuums in anything that's <laughs> Manufacturers, I appreciate design in the natural world, of course, that's the best sort of design. But something that's been physically designed by a man or a woman. Um, if it looks nice, if it's pleasing to the eye, then I appreciate it. I appreciate its form and function. That is a lovely looking cleaner. Right, I'm going to give it a quick go. I'm not putting loads of muck down. Um, I'm going to get some other bags for this. You might not see this for a while because this is going into storage. Um, in my new storage location, highly top secret location. Uh, it's probably full by now. <coughs> right, let's have a go. I'll have a go with the uh, Roto Soft and I'll have a go with the old Vario head as well. Well, it's now a few weeks since I started making this unboxing video because unfortunately I was just doing some glamour shots of this AEG Chroma and we had a power cut and because it was uh, in the evening I couldn't continue filming even on the battery because there wasn't enough light so I had to abandon that project and it's a good job I hadn't put down all the mess that's behind me before the power cut not that it would have really mattered in this house because I do have several fully charged cordless machines that would have picked up the mess but um, so anyway the difference in time the gap I've had between starting this video and finishing it means that I was able to source some more bags and I managed to get these they're not genuine but they are fleece bags which is a little bit better I think than the paper bags that actually fitted so I'm going to do a little demo of this AEG um, using one of these bags I didn't notice until I'd opened these bags out that I've got a filter as well I'm not sure if that filter is meant for this cleaner let's have a look it could be oh yes i think it is i think it's exhaust filter ah yes not as good i can tell they look very similar on camera let me just adjust my mic that's it there we are they look very similar that's the original but what i'll do actually yes to keep the original nice for the demo i'll put in the spare just pop it down into the little section there we go so that'll mean the original filters kept nice and clean can't do much about that one but that will just vacuum off if it gets dirty and it might get dirty because I've put down quite a lot of filth in order to test the turbo nozzle and the vario nozzle so uh, Maybe the suction will be a bit better as well. Okay, without any further ado, got some dirt. Let's pick it up. Well, there you go it's not done too bad just two passes it's got the majority the only thing that it has left when you look really close is some of the loose leaf tea but for one forward and back pass that's pretty good a little bit of snow plowing at the front but um, yeah all in all that's very good for straight suction I did do it on the maximum setting 1400 watt 
Let's uh, get that lovely new turbo nozzle all dirty and see if that makes an improvement on the Vario 4100 nozzle. Well, surprisingly, a very similar result. The Rotosoft head has a slightly wider swept path. It's hardly anything in it, very slightly. But the keen eye, I don't know if it picks up on camera, I'll point to it. There is a very, very thin line of shame consisting of the loose leaf T. That's obviously where the belt is on the underside of the turbo nozzle. And looking at it closely, Yes, there is bits of tea in the uh, pile still. One or two more passes should get rid of the rest of that. And it did snow plow a little bit. There's some of the large particles the nozzle pushed a bit further. I probably would have got them if this footstool wasn't in the way. That, um, you can't see it, but it's just here off camera. But yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass the Rotosoft again couple more times through this to see if it deals with the rest of the very tiny particles and I'll do the same with the old Vario head on this path and then we'll just clean up the rest of this mess. Well, after two more passes, I would say the Rotosoft Turbo Head is the winner, but it's minuscule the difference between the two. There are still the odd particle of loose leaf tea, but slightly, very slightly less on the turbo nozzle side. I think the turbo nozzle would do better on pet hair demonstration, but um, for general dirt like this, between the straight suction and the turbo, there's nothing in it really. Well, there you go, this AG Vampire Chroma Electronic is no longer new and unused. It has now been sullied with a load of dirt and probably far more dirt than it was expecting to pick up on its maiden voyage. In fact, the bag, I think, is chock-a-block. 
there was definitely a drop in suction and uh, the Rotosoft head was not spinning as fast as it was at the beginning of the demo and the bag check indicator was indicating that the bag is full and also the note of the motor changed. So let's see how full this bag is. Ooh, pretty full. I'm going to use the self-sealing mechanism, which works pretty well on these. Uh... Oh, it's, it's packed solid, no wonder. It still did have some suction. I think if I was to use the paper bag, it would have lost its suction long before it was as full as this. I'm trying to get it out without... There we go. Ugh. Well, that isn't bad. I'll sh we'll have a quick look at the uh, bag compartment in a minute. But uh, these imitation bags seem to have done pretty well at holding all that muck in. I mean, that is really as full as it's going to get. And if we look inside here, it is still pretty clean. Look at that. I'd have expected there to have been some dust passed through, especially after that extreme test. But there is a tiny little bit so it's a few tiny little larger particles somehow have managed to uh, escape the bag. But looking at that, that filter is still clean. I expect though that the post motor filter, the exhaust filter, might have gone a little bit black. So let's have a look. Yes, well, it's gone a little bit grey as you can see, but that is mainly carbon dust from the motor and I think when electric motors are new they do give off a little bit of extra carbon dust until the carbon brushes bed down a bit that's what I heard anyway ages ago from someone but you can see it's actually taken the shape you see where the the gray is it's taken the shape of the holder so I'm glad I put that uh, that uh, imitation filter in because it now means when I give this a quick wipe over and put it back in its box I'll replace the filter with the original and put the original paper bag in and it will be as good as new, almost. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed having a look at this AEG Vampire Chroma Electronic. Certainly one of the smartest looking vacuum cleaners I've got. I think if this was, say, in red and black, it just wouldn't have that same appeal, would it? It's definitely the chrome finish that makes this look, well, just a little bit, a cut above the rest, I'd say. But don't get any big ideas, AEG, because you're going back in your box where you can be kept looking lovely until maybe one day I'll have the space to display you and uh, your many, many friends. If you have any comments or questions about this vacuum cleaner, don't forget, comment below and I'll try and get to your uh, comments as soon as I can. If you've liked this video, give me a thumb up. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.